Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to spend some time solving problems related to uh, exponential functions, um, primarily related to well certain properties which we have already um, learned before, um, and uh, uh, the graphs which I also spend some time describing. Um, let's just start from something which uh, I used without the proof during one of my first lectures on exponential functions. Um, I was actually referring to the fact that exponential function um, like this with greater than one base is growing uh, and it's growing uh, without any limits. It eventually overcome any number, whatever we can come up with. So basically, um, it grows to positive infinity. Let me ju just use these words, although I don't really like to use infinity because it's not properly defined. But anyway, everybody understands that the function grows um, uh, limitlessly, so to speak. OK, how can I prove it? Now, I refer to some something which seems to be rather obvious. like this. And um, I said, well, it's very easy to prove it by induction. OK, so let's just, as our first problem, let's just prove it by induction that this is a true statement where d is greater than 0. Now, I put 1 plus d instead of a, uh, with d is greater than 0, because a is greater than 1. So it's easier to do it this way. So. This is basically this function for uh, some value d, which is greater than 0. And uh, whatever the integer, whatever natural actually um, exponent is. So if I will prove that eventually um, this function for natural argument of exponent overcomes any given number, then obviously for or rational or irrational, it will be proven as well, because we were talking about monotonic property of the function. So if I will be able to prove this, then it's very easy to prove that for any given d and any given number, I will always find the exponent n that this particular expression would be greater than that number. If I want to find number n in such a way that the result of this would be greater than some k, what is the n? Well, obviously, it's solvable n greater than k minus 1 divided by d, right? k minus 1 divided by d. So if I will choose this n for this given k and, and, and d, then my exponent would be greater, my exponent would be greater than this number k, because it's greater than this, and this is greater than k. So I was using it without a rigorous proof. So let's just do it by induction. OK, how can I prove this by induction? First, if you remember, I have to uh, check if the formula, in this case, its inequality is true for some initial value of n. Well, we are talking about natural n, right? So we can check it for n equals to 1. But what's interesting is for n equals to 1, on the left I will have 1 plus d, and on the right I will have 1 plus d, which is equality, not inequality. That's not good. So let's just move forward. Since we are moving always to infinity, we don't have to start with 1. We can start with 2. So how about 2? 1 plus d squared is equal to 1 plus 2d plus d squared. And 1 plus 2d is on the right. Now, obviously, this is greater than this because of this positive element. So for n is equal to 2, I have checked that this is true. OK. First. N equals 2 
true. The second step in the uh, induction proof is assume that the formula is true for some n, let's say, equals to some, some k, whatever. So 1 plus d to the power of k is greater than 1 plus k d. So assume for n is equal to k. Now 3 set n is equal to k plus 1, the next one. Well, let's just think about 1 plus d now to the power of n where n is equal to k, k plus 1 is this, which is 1 plus d to the power of k times 1 plus d, right? If you have the same base multiplied by each other, exponents are added together, k and 1 would be k plus 1. Now, this, by assumption, is greater than 1 plus kd. And I will take this without any change. Well, let's open the parentheses. It will be 1 plus kd plus d plus kd squared, which is equal to 1 plus k plus 1d plus kd squared. Right? Now, this is greater. Let's just draw this one. Right? This is greater than this. So basically, we started with this, did some transformations, used our assumption, and we came to the same formula as before for n is equal to k plus 1. You see, here's k plus 1, and here's k plus 1. k plus 1, k plus 1. So the formula has been proven, inequality in this case, has been proven for n is equal to k plus 1, considering we have checked it for n equals 2, and assuming that it, it's true for n is equal to k, that basically concludes our proof by, proof by induction. That's it. That was easy. Next. Next, we are talking about steepness. Okay. The function um, has certain quality which we can call steepness of this function. Let me just generalize it first. If you have some kind of uh, graph, whatever the graph is, and you would like to know how steep the function is at certain point, somewhere. Now, you basically feel that this is less steep than, let's say, here. Because here, we can put the tangent here, and this tangent is here. This is steeper. So basically, the steepness is more or less a steepness of the tangent in this particular point, whatever we're trying to measure. Um, however, since tangents to complicated functions is not an easy concept, it goes to analysis, uh, limits, etc., etc. We are not touching this particular thing. So we would like to approximate the steepness of the function. And here's my way to approximate. Instead of dealing with tangents, I will deal with increments. So if this is two integer points of the argument, I have, if this is the function, this particular segment can characterize how steep the function is. If moving by one step from n to n plus 1, my function is increasing from uh, a to the power of, of n to a to the power of n plus 1, then their difference 
characterizes the steepness of the function. So on a unit increment of the argument, function is incremented by certain number. And the greater this number is, the steeper the function is. So my point is that if I will have two different um, exponential functions, this is b to the power of x. My point is that the greater the base, if b is greater than a, the function is steeper, which means that on the same segment, the increment of the function, this is b to the n, and this is b to the n plus 1. So the increment of the function b to the power of x, where b is greater than a, should be greater than the increment of the function a to the power of x. If I will be able to prove it, then I can state that the um, exponential function with larger base is steeper than the corresponding uh, exponential function with a smaller base. And we are talking about case when both bases are greater than 1, so the function is increasing, not decreasing. So assuming that I have two different bases, both greater than 1, a is smaller, b is larger. I would like to prove this. So if the base is smaller, then the increment on the same uh, increment of the argument, increment of the function on the same ar increment of the argument from n to n plus 1, would be uh, larger for greater base. It kind of feels this way, but how to prove it? Well, actually, the proof is uh, very easy. Because what we can do is uh, a to the n plus 1 is a to the power of n times a minus a to the power of n. Now, b to the power of n plus 1 is, is b to the power of n times b minus b to the power of n. Right? Now, this is a to the power of n factor out a minus 1. This is b to the power of n, b minus 1. Now, both a and b are greater than 1. So, uh, these are positive. Also, b is greater than a, which means b to the power of n is greater than this. And b minus 1 is greater than a minus 1. So, we have two smaller numbers, and this is two larger numbers, numbers multiplied by itself. So, obviously... Uh, the inequality is this way, and obviously everything is reversible. That's basically the proof, so we can get to this particular inequality. So, the larger the base, the steeper the function, and we are talking about case when the base is greater than 1. Okay, now we have a different set of problems related to some calculations and properties of the uh, exponent. Now, right now, I'm talking about only rational exponents. And I would like to remind that a to the power of p over q, by definition, is q's root of a to the power of p, where p and q are natural numbers integer greater than zero, uh, greater than zero then. Okay, now, considering this is a definition of the rational number, and also, by the way, a to the power minus p over q would be 1 over, that's the definition of negative uh, exponent. Now, using this, I have a bunch of uh, inequalities which I would like to prove. Okay, 2 to the power 3 over 2 less than 3. How can I prove this? Well, let's go by definition. What is this? This is square root of 2 to the third, and this is 3. Now, 
I don't know really whether this particular inequality is true or not, but I can always square it in this case, because this is a square root. If I will square it, I will get rid of the square root. I will get 2 to the third, 3 to the second. Now, this is 8, this is 9. Now, this is obvious inequality, right? So, from something which I don't know of, using certain transformations, I came to the obviously true uh, inequality. Now, I'm saying the key statement. Since all the transformations are reversed, reversible, uh, from this obviously true statement follows this. Now, why is it reversible? Well, from here to here is obvious. Now, if I have two numbers, positive numbers, from both I can uh, take an arithmetic root, in this case it's a square root, and that would not change the inequality, so from this follows this, and this is actually a definition for this. So basically all transformations are reversible, and that's why this is a proof. So analysis is going this way, and proof is going that way. Now, I'm not going actually to this exercise of explaining. I'll just say, since it's reversible, I'm proving the top inequality. So for all subsequent cases, I will be as short as possible. OK, 3 to the power of 3 seconds should be greater than 5. True or false? OK. Uh, this is square root of 3 to the third greater than 5. Uh, 3 to the third greater than 5 to the second, right? I can square both sides of the inequality. Now this is 27, 27. And this is 25. Now this is obviously a true statement. And all these are reversible, that's why I have proven this one. Next, 5 to the power of 3 seconds greater than 11. Okay, this is a square root of 5 to the third greater than 11. Square both sides, 5 to the third greater than 11 square. This is 125. 5 times 5 times 5, 25 times 5, 125. 11 times 11 is 121. Obvious inequality. So from this, everything is reversible, follows this. And this is the proof. Okay. Next. Uh, 3 to the power 2 third greater than 2. All right, now this is the third degree root of 3 to the second greater than 2. That's the definition of 3 to the power 2 to third. Now, I will uh, make a, uh, I raise both sides in the third uh, in the power of 3. So I will get rid of the cubic root. It will be 3 to the second greater than 2 to the third. Uh, to the third. Uh, this is 9, this is 8. This is obvious, everything is reversible, and that's why this is proven. Next, 5, 2 third, less than 3. How to prove that? Again, this is a cube root of 5 to the second, raised to the power of 3, 5 to the second less than 3 to the 3. This is 25, this is 27. This is obvious, and everything is reversible, so my initial inequality is proven. And the last one, and the last one is, I have to prove that 8 to the power 2 third is equal to 4. Okay. What is 8 to the power of 2 thirds? This is the cubic root of 8 to the second. I have to prove this. Or if I will raise both sides to the power of 3. Now, 8 squared is 64. 4, uh, four cubed is 4 times 4, 16 times 4, 64. This is obvious. And that's why everything is reversible, and that proves this one. So this completes my short set of problems related to um, exponential functions. 
uh, I will have another set of problems, uh, a little bit more difficult. That would be in the next lecture. Uh, I do suggest you to go through all these exercises yourself. Go to unizor.com website, and everything is in there. Thank you very much.